work any footwork and shuffle step, always make sure that your feet stay lined up under your hips. As, uh, imagine that you had your feet on train tracks. My lead foot is gonna stay on one track, the rear foot is on another track. And as I'm shuffling and moving, whether it's forward, back, side, side, I wanna keep my feet lined up on those tracks. So for the forward shuffle, as I move around my square, If I take a two inch step with my front foot, I'm gonna take a two inch step with my back foot. Six inches front, six inches back. I always want that to match so that I always maintain that stance, nice solid base from my feet. For the backwards shuffle, we're gonna be moving backwards as if to disengage from my opponent or if they're charging forward, this is my way to stay in my stance and maintain my base while exiting and moving backwards and not get trapped on my heels. Just like with any of the shuffle movements, it's really easy to take too big of a step with that second foot and let it catch up with the rear foot. So always make sure you maintain that distance front to back between the heel and the back toe. The other positional movement that I will often use uh, when in the ring sparring or even doing pad work or bag work is the side shuffle. So same concept as I step, I'm gonna follow my second step with my rear foot if I'm going to the lead side. If I'm going to the rear side, I'm gonna step, step. Same concept, if I take six, six inch step with my first foot, I'm gonna take a six inch step with my second foot. So I always maintain that base. I can go left or right. This is a great way to follow my opponent or partner and pad holder as they're moving around the floor in the ring to stay zoned in, to stay in contact with them and prevent them from gaining access to the middle of the ring where they'll be stronger and more dominant. Next we'll have the fast shuffle. So this is a propelling movement. This is a great way if I'm on one side of the ring and my opponent is on the other for me to catch up and close the distance in a much faster way. So I'm going to use my back foot and propel myself forward. So I'm kind of leaping forward and jumping. The great brine step. As you go in a circular motion, the crossover step, as some call it, is a great way to work agility and get your foot, foot movement moving, as well as your hip motion happening, which is huge in a lot of Muay Thai movements. A lot of the action, especially with leg kicks and knees, come from the hips. So doing things in your warm-ups that allow the hips to get open and warm is gonna help you out. So for the crossover step or grapevine, I'm gonna step the back foot behind, front foot. Back foot in front, front foot. Just keep crossing over. I can go both directions. For the purpose of what we're trying to train ourselves to do, focus on keeping your hands up in the guard position at the same time instead of bringing them down to your waist. And then that way you're training that muscle memory to always be up here, keep your guard up, so you don't drop your hands and take that shot. Our next agility movement is just gonna be a two foot front and back hop. So I'm gonna put my feet together, heels up off the floor, and I'm just gonna bounce back and forth. You can play around with the size of the hop I can cover more ground, 
more distance or to really get that agility and that bounce plyometric type movement movement nice short movements imagine the ground is lava and you're just hopping your feet up every time you touch boom 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 i want to work on that reaction time so that when i'm in the ring sparring it plays into all of my footwork and how I maneuver around the ring. Similar to the front and back hop is the side hop. So same concept, feet together, heels up off the floor. I'm just gonna bounce side to side. If you like the visual of a line, it's great to put a rope down or some sort of marker to give yourself a visualization of hopping over that line. Same concept applies. The feet touch the ground as soon as they do. Just springing up off the floor, loaded up, moving as quick as you can, working on your reaction time. Again, so it plays into your activity and your movement in the ring, teaching the feet to be nice and light. Our final agility warm up is going to be a frog hop. So I'm gonna start down in a plank position this is gonna be great for getting that hip mobility in. Um, again, Muay Thai, a lot of the movements and strikes come from the hips. My kicks and knees are gonna really be accelerated and get my power from my hip action and movement. So making sure I'm nice and warmed up, the hips are loose, have lots of mobility, are gonna give me a lot more strength and power in all of the striking that I do. So, start in a plank position. I'm gonna hop my feet up, right up to my hands and back to a plank. As you come through to that frog position, drop your hips down. That's gonna add a little bit of extra stretch to the hips themselves. If you can't get up to the hands yet, don't worry about it. Get the, hand, the feet as close as you can. That flexibility will come in time. 